Hello guys, welcome to another calculus video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this absolute monster of an integral uh, because it's a generalized form of an already difficult integral. It's the integral from negative infinity to infinity of cosine of x over x to the 2n plus 1. So uh, we already know that in the case of n equals 1, the integral equals um, pi over e. This has been shown on flammable maths and maths 505 and lots of channels, but today I want to tackle a more general form where we can do plug in any n greater than or equal to 1 and figure out the value of this integral. The way we're going to do this is we're going to convert it into the real part of a contour integral. So without any further ado, let's jump right in and see how we're going to do that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is discuss our contour. We're going to use it be using a normal semicircular contour in the upper half plane. We'll call this upper integral a gamma integral. Of course, what we're integrating over here is e to the i z over z to the 2n plus 1 dz. And that's because when we take the real part of that, that's going to turn into the original function that we were integrating at the beginning. Let's plug in z nice and good there. And uh, this part of the integral right here, this lower branch, this is going to be um, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the i z, or I'll, I'll replace it with x, x to the 2n plus 1 dx. So the real part of this is going to be i. Okay, so this is our full contour integral, and it's going to equal to 2 pi i times the sum of the residues. And that's going to be equal to the gamma integral plus the real axis integral, right? Now, the gamma integral will go to zero. We'll show this using Jordan's lemma. So Jordan's lemma says that if you have some function uh, for a semicircular contour in the upper half plane, you have some function uh, f of z times e to the i z dz, um, uh, sorry, e to the a i z dz, where a is some constant then the maximum value of the absolute value of this is um, the maximum value of f of z, or sorry, the absolute value of f of z on that semicircle, on that semicircle times pi over a. So in this case, this means that our gamma integral, the absolute value of it is less than or equal to pi, since we just have e to the i z, times the maximum value of the absolute value of 1 over z to the 2n plus 1. And we'll just show that this goes to 0 real quick. Now we know that the absolute value of z to the 2n plus 1 is less than or equal to, or I'm sorry, is greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to absolute value of z to the 2n minus the absolute value of 1, which is just 1, by the triangle inequality. And then we have then that um, the absolute value of 1 over z to the 2n plus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over the absolute value of z to the 2n, which is just r to the 2n. Um, so, of course, we're doing this as r goes to infinity, right? It's just our radius of our semicircle, minus 1. And we know that this limit goes to 0 because r goes to infinity, right? So that means this also goes to 0 and this also goes to 0. So gamma goes to 0. That means that 2 pi i times the sum of the residues is equal to our real axis integral of f of z. Of that, right? So the real part of 2 pi i times the sum of the residues equals i. All right. Now let's talk about our residues. The first thing we have to worry about is, uh, the first thing we have to talk about is we only have to talk about our residues in the upper half plane because um, our contour doesn't cover this bottom area, right? So if we think about our um, where our residues are going to come from, they're going to come from 1 over z to the 2n plus 1. So for example, when n equals 1, we'll have two residues. One will be right here at positive i and one will be at negative i. Then if we have, on the other hand, n equals 2, we're going to have four residues, and they're going to be right here, right here, right here, and right here. And this happens because when we have z to the 2n 
plus 1 equals 0. This means that z, or sorry, equals 0, z to the 2n equals negative 1, or z to the 2n equals e to the i pi plus 2 pi k, for k is any integer. And this means that z equals e to the i pi over 2n plus pi k over n. And so that's just going to kind of trace out in this direction several residues. So as you can see, for 1, we have one residue. For 2, we have two residues that we need to worry about because we don't need to worry about this bottom part. And so on and so forth, it's going to go like that. For 3, we're going to have three residues. For 4, we're going to have four residues. And so all we have to do now is uh, plug in those limits and then take the real part, and that'll give us our answer. So I'll just make some more space here. OK, so our residues um, were, as we discussed in the last slide, um, it depends on the number of residues that we have. So we'll say that a one of one of the points of the poles is going to be z0. And this is going to be e to the i pi plus or i pi over 2n, sorry, plus pi k over n. And we're going to say that k goes from 0 to n minus 1. And that will give us um, our number of poles, our n number of residues. So this is what this is going to look like is in uh, 2 pi i times the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of the limit as z goes to c0. We'll just say z0. And of course, z0 is this up here of e to the iz over z to the 2n plus 1 times z minus c0. Now, I'm going to do some quick rearrangement in order to make this uh, this limit much more manageable. OK, now the only thing we have to do is that for this, this is continuous, so we can just plug in z0. And for this part, we're going to use the hospital's rule, because on the top and bottom, it's going to be 0, and we have a first order 0 on the top and bottom. So that's going to work out really nicely. So we're going to have 2 pi i times, I'll just write sum here, e to the i c0, where this is z0, right? And for this limit, um, I'm just going to, yeah, we will we will write in limit one more time here. Limit as z goes to z0 of 1 over 2n z to the 2n minus 1. And so basically we can just switch. So this is also continuous, so we can just put in a 0 there and remove this limit. The next thing we can do is we can cancel this with that, and we'll bring this n to the outside. OK, so now we have uh, the sum from one to, from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of e to the i z0. And I'll just make this z0 to the 1 minus 2n. OK, now we just have to simplify these two things. So z0, all, I'm going to simplify this into uh, its real form. Oh, I should mention here that we have this i here, i pi, pi k over n, not just pi k over n. So z0 is going to equal cosine of pi over 2n plus pi k over n plus i sine of pi over 2n plus pi k over n. Now, in order to make this simpler, I'm just going to call this bit r. So r equals pi over 2n plus pi k over n. So we're going to have pi i over n sum of e to the, now when we multiply by i, we're going to have i cosine of r minus sine of r because we're multiplying by i. And for z0, um, we're going to have we're going to leave it in the exponential form. So we're going to have e to the i r times 1 minus 2 n. Actually, I'll write out r all the way here because that's going to make it easier for us. OK. Now we're going to simplify this even further. So up here, I'm going to put this up here. We're going to have pi i over n 
the sum. So this real part is just going to come to the bottom. We're going to have um, all over e to the sine of r. And for e to the i cosine of r, that's going to be cosine of cosine r plus i sine of cosine r. Then for this part, to simplify this, we're just going to FOIL it out. So this is going to end up just being i pi over 2n, and then minus i pi for this one. And then for this, we have plus i pi k over n. And this last one, we have minus 2 pi i k. Now this part is not going to matter because adding 2 pi to the angle of something just ends up with the same thing. And this bit, we have e to the negative i pi, that's the same as negative 1. So I'll just bring this negative to the front and then not worry about this. And this bit that's left over is just the same thing as r. Negative sign here, and then another e to the i r. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide for more space. Okay, in order to simplify this a bit more, we're going to expand out e to the i r. So this is going to end up being cosine of r plus i sine of r. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take into account that we only need to consider the real part of this. Now, we have an i out here, which means that the real part of the entirety of this is only going to correspond to the imaginary part of what's inside the sum. So when we multiply cosine of cosine r by cosine r, that's going to give us a real number, which we don't want to worry about inside of the sum, because a real number times this i on the outside will be imaginary. So that part we're not going to have to worry about. Similarly, i sine of cosine r right here multiplied by i sine of r is going to give us another real value, so we don't need to worry about that either. Now we're just going to multiply out this and this, because that's what will give us something imaginary. So we have negative pi i over n sum of i cosine cosine r sine r and then the other multiplication plus i sine cosine r cosine r. Now this i here is going to cancel with the negative i outside of the integrand uh, outside of the sum. So we're just going to end up with pi here and all over e to the sine of r. All right, and now the only thing left to do is to simplify this bit. So if any of you re remember the sine angle addition formula, sine of a plus b equals sine a cosine b plus sine b cosine a. And Voila, in right here we have r, we have cosine r, we have cosine r, and we have r. So this whole thing is actually equal to pi over n times the sum of sine of r plus cosine r, all over e to the sine r. And that's all the simplification that we can actually do. Of course, it's not perfect. We still have a little bit of a pesky sum here. But this is a closed form answer right here. And coming from that insane integral that we started with, this is a pretty good answer. So this is our answer to our integral. We have slayed that monster. That was quite an amazing integral. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, sorry it's a bit long this time, but I, I'll try to cut out as much as I can. Yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you in the next one.